happens. Check the valve core for leakage with soap water. If bubbles are found, it is inferred that there is a leakage. In such cases, replace the valve core with the help of the valve remover and check for leakage again. Jack up the vehicle. Remove the wheel nuts. Remove the wheel from the vehicle. Insert the tire lever in between the disc and the beading and force out the tire from the disc without damaging the tube and the beading area of the tire. Care should be taken not to insert the tire lever fully inside the disc to avoid damage to the tube. Repeat the steps on the other side of the tire for separating the tire beading from the disc. Remove the tube from the tire. Inflate the tube at a pressure of about 3 to 5 pounds per square inch. Dip the inflated tube in the water tub. Notice bubbles arising out of the punctured area. Mark the punctured area using a marking material. Clean the punctured area with wood rough file. Apply vulcanizing cement on the punctured portion. Place a piece of vulcanizing raw rubber on the punctured area. Clamp the punctured area on the vulcanizing equipment. Switch on the vulcanizing equipment for about 15 minutes. Allow the tube to cool down for about 15 minutes. Unclamp the equipment and remove the tube. Inflate the tube with low pressure of 5 to 10 pounds per square inch. Replace the tube if found irregularly bulged. Dip the repaired tube in the water tub and check for any leakage. Check the tire inner area for nails, stones and damages. Insert the tube into the tire. Insert the tube mouth into the rim. Inflate the tube slowly until the beads are fully seated and re-inflate according to the manufacturer's specifications. Purpose of clutch, gearbox and differential. Objectives To know the purpose of the clutch unit, the purpose of a gearbox, the purpose of a differential unit, the concept of a transaxle, the integrated layout of the clutch, gearbox and differential and to identify the basic components of the clutch, gearbox and differential. The clutch. Transmission clutch performs two tasks. It disengages the engine from the transmission to allow gear changing. It is a means for gradually engaging the engine to the driving wheels. When a vehicle is to be moved from rest, the clutch must engage a stationary gearbox shaft with the engine. This must be rotating at a high speed to provide sufficient power, otherwise the load will be too great and the engine will stall or come to rest. The clutch used depends on the type of gearbox. Automatic gearboxes normally use a fluid clutch which automatically disengages when the engine speed falls below 800 revolutions per minute. Manually operated gearboxes use a dry friction clutch. Friction clutches A friction plate sandwiched between the engine flywheel and a spring-laded pressure plate transmits the drive to the gearbox. The extent of the drive is controlled by the force which is clamping the plate. Lowering the driver pedal causes disengagement by separating the friction surfaces. During this operation, the force of the spring is taken by the driver. Initial upward movement of the pedal causes the friction surfaces to contact. Further pedal movement allows the full spring force to act on the driven plate to ensure that all plates rotate at the same speed without any slip. Types of friction clutches Most friction clutches are of the dry type. That is, they do not run in oil. The clutch will not function effectively if oil gets on the asbestos-based friction lining. 
Most vehicles use a single plate type because this compact design is efficient especially as regards to the disengagement. Pressure on the friction plate is obtained by using diaphragm multi-spring assembly. Cars commonly use diaphragm type clutches. The failure of surface to grip resulting in the driven plate revolver slower than the engine flywheel in such a case clutch gets hot and emits an odor. The gearbox besides providing forward or reverse motion of a vehicle the gearbox must overcome one of the drawbacks of the internal combustion engine that is the poor torque output at low engine speeds. Gearing is provided either to one boost the engine torque or two enable the engine to be operated at speed where its output power is high. Synchro mesh. As the name suggests, this type of gear has a synchronization device which equalizes the seeds of the two members that have to be meshed to obtain the gear. The synchro mesh gearbox gives a simpler, quieter and quicker gear change. Propeller shafts and universal joints. The propeller shaft transmits the drive from the gearbox main shaft to the final drive pinion. The shaft is long and tubular and balanced to reduce vibration. A shaft connecting the final drive to an independently prung driving road wheel is called a drive shaft. Universal joints. A universal joint is a device to transmit the drive through a varying angle. Axle movement due to bumps in the road cause the distance between the gearbox and the rear axle to alter. A universal joint allows the movement at the sliding flexible joint. Final drive and differential. A conventional transmission has a tubular rear axle to support the weight of the rear of the car. This axle contains the final drive gears, differential and axle shafts. The final drive gear brings down the speed to suit the road wheels and redirects the line of drive. When a vehicle is cornered, the inner wheel moves through a shorter distance than the outer wheel. This means that the inner wheel must slow down and the outer wheel must speed up. During this movement, it is desirable that each driving wheel maintains its driving. This task is performed by a differential. Remove and refit front bumper. Objectives. At the end of this exercise, you shall be able to remove and refit front bumper and attend for ratting. Remove the headlamp. Remove the bumper mounting bolts to the fender. Remove the wheel guard mounting retainer of bumper side. Installation is the reverse of removal. Remove and refit headlamp and other lamp assembly. Objectives. Renew headlamp bulbs, other bulbs. Remove and refit headlight assembly. Removal and installation of heel lamps, turn signal lamp. 
Disconnect the headlamp connector. Installation is the reverse of removal. Caution. Do not touch the surface of the bulb with hands or dirty gloves. Rare combination lamp. Disconnect the battery negative terminal and loosen the rare combination lamp mounting screws. Disconnect the combination lamp connector. Installation is the reverse of removal. Servicing a vehicle. Objectives. Wash and clean a vehicle. Grease all grease points with the recommended grease. Check and top up the recommended oil in all the units. Job sequence. Park the vehicle in the center of the car hoist. Close all the door glasses. Loosen the wheel nuts one or two threads. Slowly raise the car house six inches above the ground level. Note the tire numbers and positions. Remove the wheel nuts and keep the nuts of each wheel separately to avoid mixing with the other nuts. Remove the wheels. Raise the car to the required height. Provide a safety stand under the side rails. Ensure that all dust and dirt is completely removed. Clean the bottom side of the chases with the compressed air. Check for the bolts and nuts under the chases for looseness and any oil leakages. Check the oil level in the gearbox, differential and steering box. If necessary, top up to the required level. Grease the greasing points with the grease gun. Spray anti-corrosive oil under the chases. Rotate the tires as per the manufacturer's recommendation. Tighten the wheel nuts by hand tightening. Raise the hoist, remove the safety stand and lower the vehicle to the ground. Tighten the opposite wheel nuts at specified torques and remove the vehicle from the hoist. Mix 100 ml liquid soap with 5 liters of water. Apply the solution on the body of the vehicle. Clean the body by a car washer with fine spray. Wipe and clean the body with a piece of leather cloth. Check the water level in the radiator. The battery terminal for any corrosion or looseness. The engine oil. The brake fluid level in the master cylinder. The air pressure of the wheels as per specifications. The fan belt tension. Servicing air filter, cleaner. Objectives. Remove the air cleaner from an engine. Clean the filter element. Check the oil level in the air cleaner. Fit the air cleaner on the engine. Job sequence. Service air cleaner. Unscrew the bolt or wing nut of the air cleaner with the help of a spanner or plier. Remove the top cover with the filter element and gasket. Loosen the nuts. Fixing clip. Fixing the air cleaner on the inlet manifold or carburetor. Remove the bottom case of the air cleaner. Clean the air cleaner housing and cover with the cloth. Inspect the filter element. If it is clogged, replace the same. Check visually the cleaned element for puncture or damage. Discard if it is found punctured or damaged. Check the plastic or rubber ring for smoothness which acts as a gasket. Installation. Place the new or old element in the lower housing. Put the top cover on the element. Tighten the wing nut with the help of a plier. Test the air cleaner by starting the engine for smooth running.
techniques, procedures, objectives. Understand the need of standardization. Understand the need of talk specifications. Read and imply talk chart. All nuts and bolts should be tightened to correct torque values. Torquing to a value less than specified results in leaks, looseness, relative movements of parts, vibration, etc. Overtalking results in damages in threads or fasteners strained to the breaking points. Torque values are based on type of joint, internal pressure to be sealed, vibrations, fastener material, etc. and are specified by all vehicle manufacturers. A torque wrench is a tool which measures the resistance to turning, torquing. There are many torque wrenches available depending on the type of applications. Types of brake and steering systems, working principles of drum and disc brakes, objectives. Understand the working principles of a brake system, identify different types of brake systems, identify various components of brake systems, understand the working principles of a steering system, identify different types of steering boxes, identify various components of steering box and its linkages. The steering system. The type of steering layout depends on the suspension system. The beam axle used on heavy commercial vehicles has a kingpin fitted at each of the axle and this pin is the pivot which allows the wheels to be steered. Cars have independent suspension. This system has ball joint to allow the wheel movement. Power assisted steering. Power assisted steering systems use hydraulic power to help the driver turn the road wheels when the steering load exceeds normal. Types of brakes. Drum brakes, disc brakes, drum brakes. These types of brakes have two shoes anchored to a stationary back plate which are internally expanded to contact the drum by hydraulic cylinders or a mechanical linkage. The end at which the shoe is anchored affects the retarding force it applies to the drum. The rotation of the drum gives a self-energizing action called the self-servo which causes 1. Leading shoe to be forced towards the drum 2. Trailing shoe to be forced away from the drum the leading shoe is the first shoe after the expander in the direction of rotation. Disc brakes. Exposed to the air, disc brakes radiate the heat to the air better than drum brakes. This means that the brake can be operated continuously for a long period as they have a greater resistance to fade or in other words fall off in brake efficiency due to heat. This fade resistance and features such as automatic adjustment make the disc brake a popular choice for the front wheels of a car. A vacuum servo fitted to the discs boosts the effort applied by the driver. Using a standard screwdriver and tightening locking devices. Objectives. Handle a screwdriver and use it. Use different types of locking devices correctly. Using a screwdriver. Select the correct size screwdriver to suit the screw slot. Select the longest suitable screwdriver with that size of tip. Hold the screwdriver with its axis in line with the axis of the screw. Guide the blade with the left hand. Apply a little pressure with the right hand to keep the tip in the slot. Twist firmly 
and steadily. Keep the tip centered in the slot and the axis of the blade in line with the axis of the screw. To turn large screws, use a screwdriver with a square blade. Apply extra twisting force with the aid of a close fitting spanner. Never use pliers or toothed wrenches to apply twisting force to a screwdriver. A standard screwdriver blade should be ground to 9 degrees so that the faces will be almost parallel with the sides of the screw slot. The end of the blade should be made as thick as the slot in the screw will permit. Do not grind the blade to a chisel point as it has a tendency to slip out of the screw slot. Tightening locking devices. Job sequence. Split pin. Tighten the nut at the specified torque. Check the bolt's holes and nut's slot alignment if not aligned. Sling the hole by tightening the nut slightly. Insert a new suitable split pin in the slot and hole. Drive the split pin fully inside. Spread open the slide of the split pins and bend it on the nut. Inside circlip or snap ring. Hold an internal circlip with the help of an internal circlip plier. Press the circlip with the help of the plier so that the diameter will be smaller than the whole diameter. In this position, insert the circlip in such a manner that it will sit squarely in the groove. Take out the plier. Outside circlip or snap ring. Hold an outside circlip with the help of an external circlip plier. Press the external circlip plier so that the circlip will enlarge in diameter. In the enlarged position of circlip, slide it on the shaft. While sliding, set it in the shaft groove. Ensure that the circlip sits squarely in the groove. Take out the plier. Wire ring hose clamp. Clean the outside surface where the hose pipe is to be set. Apply grease inside the starting end surface for easy insertion. Set the wire spring hose clamp on the hose pipe. Slide the hose pipe on the metal pipe. Press the hose clamp with the help of a plier and slide it on the joint of the hose pipe and metal pipe. Take out the plier. Wheels, tires and steering troubles. Objectives. Rectify abnormal wear of tire. Rectify wheel wobbling. Rectify poor self-centering. Rectify hard steering. Rectify trouble of vehicles pulling to one side. Job sequence. Abnormal wear of tires, front and rear. Tire inflation. Inflate if not inflated at corrected pressure. Toe in, toe out, adjust if not adjusted correctly. Bearings. Replace if found damaged. Hub and play. Adjust if found excessive. Kingpin bushes. Replace if found worn out. Kingpin end play. Adjust if found excessive. Axle beam. Replace if found bent, twisted. Brake binding. Adjust brakes if binding is found. Chassis frame. Replace if found twisted, bent. Poor self-centering. Check the following. Steering linkages. Lubricate if found unlubricated. Tire pressure. Inflate if not inflated at correct pressure. Wheel alignment. Align if not aligned. Steering's inner columns. Preload adjust if found excessive. Adjustment between steering gear and worn. Adjust if not adjusted properly. Hard steering. Check the following. Tire pressure. Inflate if not inflated properly. Tire size. Use tire of recommended size if found wrong sizes tire fitted. Oil level in steering gearbox. Top up if found less. Preload of steering inner column. Adjust if found excessive. Drag link. Replace if found bent. Vehicle pulling to one side. Check the following. Tires. Replace if found unequally worn out. Drag link. Tie rod. Replace if found bent. Center bolt of spring. Tighten if found loose. Spring bushes. Replace if found worn out.
working principle of four-stroke petrol and diesel engine. Objectives. Understand how a four-stroke petrol and diesel engine works. Know how an engine can be called four or two-stroke engine. Operating principles of engines. Gas expansion. When a gas is heated, it tries to expand. If this expansion is resisted, then a high pressure is built up which in turn creates a large force. A mixture of petrol and air compressed in a container or a cylinder makes an explosive gas. When the gas is ignited, the pressure moves the piston towards the open end of the cylinder. Linking the piston by a connecting rod to a cranked shaft causes the gas to rotate the shaft through half a turn. The power stroke uses up the gas, so means must be provided to expel the burned gas and recharge the cylinder with fresh petrol air mixture. The valves control the movement of gas. An inlet valve allows the new mixture to enter at the right time. An exhaust valve lets out the burned gas. A flywheel and its need. A flywheel is needed to drive the crankshaft during the time that the engine is performing the non-power strokes. The flywheel carries the engine over the non-working strokes. Multi-cylinder engines. A smoother flow of power from the crankshaft is obtained when more than one cylinder is used. The extra power impulses are spaced out evenly throughout the two revolutions of the four-stroke cycle. The flywheel of a multi-cylinder engine is lighter in weight. Inline engines. The cylinders are placed in a single row. Twin cylinders. Twin cylinders are used in motorcycles and some small cars. One power stroke of every 360 degrees of crankshaft movement. Four cylinders are commonly used in cars to give good balance to the crankshaft.
नमस्कार आपका स्वागत है इसी लैंग्वेज के तीसरे अध्याय में मैं हूं आपका प्रशिक्षक कौशल किशोर शर्मा प्रधान तकनीकी अधिकारी सी डेक पुणे आज हम बात करेंगे डिसीजन मेकिंग सिंटेक्स इफ एल्स स्विच लूप 